Hello, and welcome back to episode 16 of Acquire English Live. My name is Adam. I'm an English teacher from the US. I'm here as always with Tuan, an English teacher from the UK. And each week we look at some conversations in English and break down the, the grammar involved and some vocabulary and general culture that goes into uh, English speaking countries. Um, we make a lot of different videos and we've also got a couple courses available right now. Uh, one of them is on Udemy, if you're not familiar with that. You can find us if you just search for Acquire English Udemy and we'll be one of the top ones there. You can see our Acquire English course. And this particular one is for very beginners, so A1 to A2 learners. Uh, you can see we've got some five-star reviews. So this course is to improve speaking, listening, and pronunciation. So um, we really recommend this for those lower level students who want to improve their speaking. And we also have one for upper beginners. This one is also on Udemy. And you can see they're having a sale right now as well. These courses are 1,500 yen, it says yen because we're in Japan. They're about $12, 12 US dollars right now with the sale. But this one is for A2 to get to a B1 level. So for those students. And this is a brand new course, just about one month old. Okay. And of course, don't forget, we also have lots of free material on YouTube and on Facebook. So please like our page, subscribe there as well. And of course, we also have on Skillshare. If you are a member of Skillshare, you can watch our videos there too. But uh, today, Tuan, we are talking about what we have to do this week. What, do you have a busy week this week planned? Yes, a little busy. Um, yeah, quite a, quite a lot to do. What, what are you, do, you, do you use some sort of checklist to, uh, to make sure you don't miss out on anything? Or? Yes, I do. Yeah, I keep a checklist every day. So like, this is my little checklist. But, wow, you're yeah, organized. Of, I don't know, post-its for yeah, more lists. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. not that organized. I make a list to go to the supermarket and I still forget many things. So, not the it's not the list's fault. Not always the list's fault. So uh, I'm. What do I'm a you? Little... What do you have to do this week? This week, um, I have to take my son to the doctor. This week, um, I of course have to make some videos. This week, some new videos. Um, I have to so. Uh, I have to throw away many things, not necessarily this week, but before the end of the year, um, some bigger things like an old printer that maybe you've seen in the classroom here that I've had probably sitting there for about two years. Uh, mm. I, need, I, need to, uh, I need to throw that away. Um, uh, in Japan, it's big to have like end of the year cleaning, right? Mm. In, in the States, yes. it's kind of spring cleaning we have. But in Japan, it's usually end of the year. So uh, being in Japan, I need to do some end of the year cleaning as that's approaching. But how about you? What do you have going on? It was similar. Yeah, I need to throw away some old clothes. I think um, I've got some work. But yeah, I need to do some shopping. I need to get a haircut. It's a little long. Yeah. What, what about uh, Christmas presents for your wife? Is that something on your checklist? Yeah, I need to think of that as well. That's... Yeah, it's good that you, that's not on the checklist, but put yeah, that on your list. To do that. Put that on your list. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Most of the All things right. on the list are emails. Yeah. Need to right. send a lot of emails. Yeah. yeah. I really should make some sort of, sort of checklist like that, but uh, I don't. I've, I've read a good book called uh, Checklist Manifesto. Have you heard of that book? No. It's a, it's a book about why making checklists is important and uh, kind of the history and really interesting book, but um, it didn't work for me. I still don't make so many checklists. So, oh, well, but anyway, 
enough about checklists. Let's get into today's conversation. So we have our two characters and we're talking about uh, having a baby today. So let's have a listen to today's conversation. Did you do anything fun over the weekend? Is shopping for baby stuff all weekend fun? Yikes, when is the due date again? It's one month from today. Wow, it's coming soon. Have you picked out a name yet? No, not yet. But we've already bought a lot of clothes. Okay, and let's just go line by line and break down that conversation there. Okay. So the first line here, Tuan said. Did you do anything fun over the weekend? Right. Did you do anything fun over the weekend? So as you can see in the picture, darts, video games, bowling, beer, Saturday, Sunday, over the weekend. So it just means, did you have a good weekend? Right. Easy enough. Did you do anything fun over the weekend? Did you have a good weekend? And the next line, I said, is shopping for baby stuff all weekend fun? So notice I answered Tuan's question with another question. And this might be a little bit difficult to explain. So please, uh, please be patient here. So this type of question is called, we call it a rhetorical question. So the meaning here is no, I went shopping for baby stuff all weekend. So one more time, Tuan said, did you do anything fun over the weekend? I could answer, no, I went shopping for baby stuff all weekend. For me, that is not fun, right? But in the conversation I said, is shopping for baby stuff all weekend fun? So I answered his question with an answer or with a question, and this is called a rhetorical question. So let's look at some more examples of this because we use these a lot in, you'll hear them a lot in movies and just kind of natural conversations, these might come up with native speakers. So again, a rhetorical question is a question that doesn't need an answer, okay? The answer is obvious. So for example, we have two friends here maybe. One friend said, would you like some coffee? And the other friend said, is water wet? Right, maybe that sounds very strange. So Tuan, why does this girl here say, is water wet? It's very obvious. So yeah, yes, of course. Right, right. So of course water is wet. So that means, of course, I would like some coffee. Is that okay? So the answer means, of course, right? Is water wet is, of course, yes, right? So the next example here we have a little girl who's been playing video games, looks like she got a bad grade on some homework. And the father said, do you want to be a failure all your life? So again here, the girl doesn't need to answer here, right? Because the, of course the girl does not want to be a failure all her life. Very harsh father here, very strict father here, right? But again, there's no answer for her to say. Uh, if someone says something like this to you, you don't really need to say no, because of course, you don't want to be a failure all your life. And then the last example, maybe some people are familiar with this one. Maybe there's a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife are fighting. And maybe the wife or the girlfriend says, do you think I'm stupid? Okay, so of course the man should not answer this question at all, right? <laughs> so do you think I'm stupid? There's nothing to answer there, right? He's not going to say yes, and he doesn't need to say no. So these are called rhetorical questions. You'll hear them a lot in movies, uh, but it just means it doesn't need an answer. So again, our example was, did you do anything fun over the weekend? Is shopping for baby stuff all weekend fun? For me, that's obviously a no. No, I did not do anything fun over the weekend. But let's continue with the conversation. So the next part here is? 
Yikes. When is the due date again? Right. Yikes. When is the due date again? So yikes just means something like, oh no, or eesh, something like that. So I, and then the next part, when is the due date again? I forgot when the baby is coming. So maybe you told me before. So when is, is it again? So this again is also very uh, good to use in conversation. Maybe you uh, forget someone's name right after you meet them. So you're meeting someone, you, you talk to them for a little bit and you say, I'm sorry, what's your name again? So we use that again to say, you told me before, but I forgot, please tell me again. So in this case, it was, when is the due date again? Right. So I forgot. Please tell me again. Okay. And the due date, I guess we talk about here is when is the baby coming? Right. When you find out uh, a woman is having a baby, the doctor will say the baby should come around this day. That is the due date. So in this case, May 14th. I'm sorry. Uh, so the next one is it's one month from today. So today in the conversation is May 14th. One month from today in one month is June 14th. So it's one month from today equals today plus one month or in one month. So May 14th to June 14th. Okay. And the next line. Wow. It's coming soon. So, wow, it's coming soon. So that's really close. One month is really close. Basically, one month means it could come any day now, right? It could come any day. So the due date is with one month, so the baby could come at any time, pretty much. Okay. And the next line. Have you picked out a name yet? Right. Have you picked out a name yet? Just means, have you chosen a name yet? So to pick out means to choose. Is that okay? So have you picked out? Have you chosen a name yet? And that one twice. So no, not yet, but we've already bought a lot of clothes. So no name, we don't have a name but we have a lot of clothing. Is that okay? And these last two lines we had here bring us to our grammar point for today. So we're talking about the present perfect tense today, which is always a difficult one in English. But we'll start out with this question with, have you done something yet? And done, of course, is the past participle, right? So do, did, done, eat, ate, eaten, Many of those. Okay. So in general, when we think about this grammar, it's good to have some sort of checklist. So in this case, we have a baby checklist, but this means there's some kind of expectation that something will happen. So if you're going to have a baby, you're going to give it a name. So you're going to pick out a name. If you're going to have a baby, you're going to buy clothes. You're going to pack a bag for the hospital. You're going to buy a crib or a cot, as they say in British English. Or you're going to buy a stroller or a pram, as they do in British English. So this have you done yet, there's an expectation that someone, something will happen. So that's why we have this little checklist, okay? So in the conversation was, have you picked out a name yet? So pick out a name. And then by clothes, we could say, have you bought clothes yet? Okay. The next one on our list, how would we ask this one, Tuan? Pack a hospital bag. So using that same structure again, we can say, have you and the pack, uh, past participle is packed. Right. Pack. So have you packed? a uh, hospital bag yet. Have you packed a hospital bag yet? So uh, buy a crib, or if you want to say cot, we can use cot if you'd like, Tuan. How would we do this one? So just for people that it's not clear about those two words, yeah, it's a baby's bed. Mm. 
so the bed for the baby and we can say have you and yeah we can use the same one again bought uh a crib or a cot yet a crib yet you said crib so i think american english wins i would use it with you so i don't want to confuse you thank you thanks for not confusing me okay and then the last one we have a stroller and what's a stroller again a stroller, a pram, sometimes people call it a buggy, but yeah, something you put your baby in and you push it along in the street. Right. It's got wheels on it. You, you've all, everyone's seen them before. So how would we do this one? Have you? Have you bought a stroller yet? Have you bought a stroller yet? Right. So again, there's an expectation that you will do these things. So we can use this question. Have you done it? Have you bought clothes yet? Have you packed a hospital bag yet? We use that yet because there's an expectation. We think you will do these things. Okay. The next point we have here, we have, I have not done something yet and I have already done something. So in the conversation, uh, no, not yet. So pick a name. We have not picked a name yet right? But by clothes, we've already bought a lot of clothes. So here we have, we haven't picked a name yet, but we've already bought a lot of clothes. Okay. So on our baby checklist, we have two things here that are checked off. We have buy clothes and pack a bag. So Tuan, how would we use this one? Pack a hospital bag. So asking the question, have you packed a hospital bag yet? And this person has done it. Mm -hmm. So we would say we've already packed a hospital bag. Right. We've already packed a hospital bag. And then how about this uh, buy a crib? So looking at the top one, same again, we can just use the same structure. We haven't, and we looked at it before, yeah, so we haven't bought a crib yet. Right, we haven't bought a crib yet. And again, when we say this, we haven't bought a crib yet, it means we will. We will buy one, but currently we do not have one, right? So we have not bought a crib yet. Right. And the same we could say for a stroller. Right. So again, no checklist. So it's not finished. No check here. So we haven't bought a stroller yet. Same one. Just like this one. Okay. I anything to add there, Tuan? Just a side point about the uh, present perfect. It's something you did in the past, but it has some kind of meaning for now. Right. So it's something that we've done in the past, but have you done it now? connecting to now and yeah, we can see the things that are done now or not. Right, right. So if you think we've already bought a lot of clothes means we bought clothes in the past and now we have clothes, right? We packed a hospital bag in the past and now the bag is packed and ready to go, right? So something you did in the past is connected to now. So, and just one more point, notice here with yet, we use in a negative sentence, I have not done yet. Already we use in a positive sentence, right? And then question, have you done? We also use yet in questions. Those are, there are some other uses, but those are the most common, okay? So let's go one last example. Tuan, I heard you are getting a dog. Yes. Is that right? Sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Not really, but Tuang, congratulations. You are going to get a dog. Okay. So we have our checklist for getting a dog. We need to buy a kennel. A kennel would be the little uh, like cage like area where dogs often sleep. We call that a kennel. Uh, decide the breed or the kind of dog. For example, this is a Shiba Inu. It's a Japanese style dog. Uh, we have to buy a leash. A leash or do you say leash or do you say lead in the UK? Collar? Lead? 
lead maybe more so yeah, yeah. some people and might say a lead is very common i grew up calling it a leash so but a lead is also possible and then we also have to think of a name for this wonderful dog that tuan is going to get okay so i will ask the questions and tuan will have to answer if you've done these things yet okay so have you bought a kennel yet? Uh, no, we haven't bought a kennel yet. We, but we need the dog to sleep somewhere. So yeah, we need to buy one. We haven't bought a kennel yet, okay? Have you decided the breed of the dog? Uh, yes, we've already decided. We love uh, Inu, so the Shiba Inu. So okay. we, like in the picture, yeah, they're supposed to be very clever dogs. Right, right. Already decided to get a Shiba. Hmm. Yeah, Shiba. Shiba Inu. Okay. So in that case, we can add our little checklist. That one's decided, right? Decide the breed. Okay. Have you bought a leash yet? No, we haven't bought a lead yet. Uh, we'll buy that when we buy the kennel. Okay. And have you thought of a name yet? Yes, we've already thought of a name. Okay. Um, not very original, but we'll probably call it Hatchy. Hatchy. Okay. I've already oh, thought, right? Think, thought, thought of a name. I'm a terrible typer today. We've already thought of a name. Is that okay? So again, when we're asking, is this complete? And this one is complete. We say, have you done it yet? So have you bought it yet? Have you decided? Have you bought? Have you thought of a name? So again, that's called the past participle okay and then if you have done it we've already decided to get but if you haven't done it we haven't bought yet maybe okay are you excited for your pretend dog tuan oh yeah you look, you look very excited about it <laughs> yeah okay anything else to add here um no, not really, but yeah, just this is useful for yeah, like lists or things that are expected, like you said earlier. Right, right. So we use this a lot for any anytime you have a, a checklist, something is expected to happen. Uh, someone wants to know, is it complete or not complete? In that case, we use this grammar. Have you done it yet? Is that okay. Maybe useful for like a project if you're working at, at, you know, on a work project and you have to tell your boss or they want to update about what you've done. Oh, I've already sent the emails or what happened. Have you booked the meeting room yet? Right. Yeah. This is very useful in that situation. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you can use it. Yeah. A lot in any sort of work projects, those sort of things. Or if it's uh, around lunchtime, we might ask someone, have you eaten lunch yet? Is a common question because we expect someone to eat lunch every day. Be okay okay and of course this video will you're either watching this video on youtube or facebook so please subscribe to those or like our page if you haven't already and as i mentioned earlier don't forget to find us on udemy and skillshare and again a lot of our videos are about practicing not just about learning so you can find uh, today's video this uh did you do anything fun over the weekend you can find this video on youtube and facebook and we'll post it in the comments but it's a training video and you should be using this video repeating along with it doing overlapping and really training your english not just listening for information and throwing information into your brain you should be training and doing some listening and repeating and those types of exercises if you really want to improve your speaking, listening, and pronunciation.
So I think that pretty much does it for us. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So thank you. Take care.